Hi everyone, I am excited to be able to reveal to you the very first wallet in the Papercraft Society Advent Calendar Box. So uh, one of mine is number one, this is Textures, and I absolutely love, love, love this stamp set. There's a clue already. So let's take a look at this and make a project with it. So we have got, um, I think there's four from Textures within the Advent Calendar. This first one does come with an additional little card that just says warm winter wishes and there's a little bit about Papercraft Society there for you. Uh, but this is the main item. So this is the stamp set that you're going to get in wallet number one. It's actually quite a large stamp set. So you've got the large geometric stag there and three sentiments as well. So I'm going to be showing you today a technique that's um, something I've been doing for a little while. It was actually something I discovered by mistake, but I love it. And I always think it looks a little bit like a burnt wood effect. So for that, I'm going to be bringing in some craft card stock. I have got a white card base as well. So hopefully these are things you've got in your stash as well as some inks. So I have got a watercolour, or rather a water-based ink, so water-reactive ink, and this is my Distress Oxide, or you can use Distress Ink. In fact, I might actually switch that up for Distress Ink instead. I think it just works a little bit better. Then I've got a black stamping ink that isn't going to react to water as well. And lastly, which is really important, is my stamping platform, because you need to be able to stamp twice in exactly the same place. So let me switch up this for an ink rather than oxide and let's get started. So this stamp is going to be absolutely perfect if you want to be colouring in the smaller geometric shapes in there. Let's peel this off the backing. Now what I would suggest, because it's a brand new stamp, before you actually use it is take yourself a pencil eraser, so I've got a good size one here, and just brush over the surface of the stamp, the side that you're going to actually be applying the ink to. I would do this with absolutely any new stamp. So this is just going to take the surface off. That's that residue that's left on there for the manufacturing process. And it's just going to allow the ink to hold better to the stamp. That's something I do with all my new stamps. Now the sentiments on here are wishing you a wonderful Christmas, Merry Christmas, and that's kind of got a distressed look to it. You probably can't see it all so well at the moment, but it has got a distressed um, kind of surface to it. And winter wishes to you and your family. So a nice range of sentiments. Now this stag does fit so perfectly on a five by seven card base. Uh, you could go a bit smaller. You could have a part of an image as well if you didn't want to do the whole one image. I'm definitely going to do the whole one just here like so. So I think that's about where I'm going to stamp that. The first thing I need to do is bring that into my stamping platform. Another item I forgot to mention that you will need for this is a mist bottle of water or a spray bottle of water. So let's just pop our stag towards the top. Now I've already trimmed my cardstock down so that it fits on a 5 by 7 inch card base with a little bit of a border. Now I get a lot of questions about my 5 by 7 top fold card bases. These are actually from Craft Stash. They are the, um, so I'm going to pick up my stag stamp. Now, because this is quite a large stamp, I am just going to hold it in the middle and just roll the edges down. This just makes sure there's no air bubbles underneath from picking it up. Okay, now what we want to do is, as I said, take some water and we're just going to spritz the surface there of the craft cardstock. And then while that's soaking in, I'm going to put my distress ink all over the surface of the stag stamp there. So press that in. You might find you want to do this a couple of times, but uh, see how it turns out. So with, so I've still got water pooling on the surface there, that's fine. And I'm just going to hold this down into that wet cardstock there. So that's the beauty of having this, um, this stamping platform is that I can easily press it all down. Now I'm going to open it up and have a look. So I've kind of got some areas here have started to bleed, but some are still quite uh, a good image. So I'm just going to give that a little bit of a spritz with some more water and try to actually get those to bleed out a little bit more. What we're aiming for is for the image, the lines to be distorted and to whip out. So a bit more water, a bit more ink as well. Now you're not usually going to see distress ink on the surface of your stamp. 
um, because it kind of pulls a little bit on the surface. There we go. Okay. Ah, oh, lovely. Perfect. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is leave that to completely air dry or take my heat gun to it and speed up the process. It's actually essential for me to say, don't move your paper at all or your stamp at all during this process. Ensure everything stays in exactly the same place. So you need to completely dry that. It's essential that that is bone dry now. Um, and no two images here are going to be exactly the same. I've got some uh, areas where it's bled a lot. I like that. This is the idea. It's supposed to look rough, rustic, natural. So then we're going to take our black ink and this is not going to react with any dampness or any water. So I've got a VersaFine Claire and I'm going to re-stamp that image. And as I say, you want to make sure your paper and your stamp are in exactly the same place. If you do accidentally move either one of those, reposition everything while everything's dry and clean. Ensure there's no ink left on your stamp. So then I'm going to come back over. I'm going to take my pressure tool. You can find these at Craft Stash as well. And I'm just going to rub over the surface. I really, really love this stamp. So then what we've got is that lovely stag image, beautifully stamped. Actually, I think there's going to be a little bit by his nose that I just want to press down and get a bit more detail, perfect. And then we've got that darker area underneath so it kind of looks like it's burnt onto wood. Now I'm going to do a similar effect for the uh, sentiment as well. So I'm going to choose one of the sentiments and I'm going to do exactly the same again using the Distress ink and then the black ink and then we'll come back and do the finishing touches. So now this is completely dry, I'm going to take it out of my stamp platform. If you wanted to, you could take a pencil, either a white pencil or a darker colour pencil, a brown or a black, and you could actually just do a little bit of shading inside the geometric shapes there on the stag. I think that would look really cool. But we're going to make this a really quick card today, and I'm going to just brush over some of the brown ink that I used onto the edges of the card as well. So you can see how that effect, that stamping effect we did, actually makes the image look like it's almost been burnt onto wood. You could also uh, maybe incorporate a wood grain to the background. If you've got, for example, a wood grain embossing folder or stencil, that would look really good as well. Now, something that's almost signature for me is adding little splats of uh, a white paint very often or an ink over the top of my card. I think this is going to be absolutely perfect with this image because it will look like snow. Now for this, you don't have to have the same ink as me. If you've got an ink, a white acrylic paint, that would work. Just water it down a little to give you uh, more sort of uh, the, the consistency that you need. Or if you've got a white gel pen, that would also work by actually drawing on some specks. So there's my finished card using that burnt wood effect. I think it looks fabulous even as a nice, simple, quick and easy card. But of course you could take it to further levels, like I say, with that sort of pencil crayon colouring in the shapes if you wanted to. You could even, instead of brown ink, use a nice bright coloured ink for a little bit of contrast and difference. So I hope you enjoyed taking a look at what's inside wallet number one from the Papercraft Society Advent Calendar. Don't forget to join us back tomorrow for day two.